This is the first event that we've had in this auditorium. Fire marshal wouldn't let us use it until just a couple days ago. We didn't, have a, we didn't have an exit, but now we have an exit. But the important thing is that you've entered and you've come here. And students, we're thrilled to have you with us. Faculty, we're uh, always happy to have you with us. Parents, thanks for being here today. You and your you and your students will have to figure out the parting, but there's a, there's, a, there's a day of reckoning, a moment of reckoning coming, nonetheless. Yeah. I'm Charles Beerbein, I'm the Dean of the College of Information and Communications. If you're not familiar with that, the college has two component parts. One is the School of Journalism and Mass Communications, now located here in this building. The other is the School of Library and Information Science, which is predominantly a graduate program, though it has a small undergraduate program of about 40 majors. Well, yesterday was move-in day. I hope everyone got everything into their rooms and that parents are not taking too many things back with them. <laughs> this has been a long time coming, this building. Uh, faculty, or if you may have older brothers and sisters who've been in this program, uh, Zach Baker comes to mind as, as one who would have heard uh, me and others say, when we get to the new building, we stopped saying that for a while because it seems to take a long time. Uh, and, and now we will no longer have to even bother referring to the old building. So we're excited about being here. You will be the first class in this building. But nonetheless, uh, we're delighted to be here. We are happy to have you here. Uh, I hope you will take advantage of the, of the opportunity to, to do kind of a self-guided tour today when you have some time when we're finished here and before you go on down to the Colonial Life Arena for the university's uh, uh, version of its convocation. Please take lots of pictures, put them on Twitter, put them on Facebook, like us on Facebook, uh, and keep in mind that multimedia is part of what we're about. Thank you very much, and now Dr. Andrea Tanner, who's the Interim Director of the Journalism School. Um, I wanted to start off today with a question for you. I'm curious, how many of you have seen this on campus when you've been here for orientation and move-in day? Posters on campus? I see a few hands here. Yes, it's the USC bucket list, and I believe that it was first put together by um, the Daily Gamecock. And it is 100 things that all Gamecocks need to do before they graduate. And some of the things on the list are things like high-five President Pastides, or picnic on the horseshoe, explore new topics in an elective class, or celebrate Thanksgiving at the USC Clemson football game, which I don't know if the parents like that idea right now. They're just giving up their babies. So I was looking at this list a couple weeks ago, and I thought that I would uh, start today with the School of Journalism and Mass Communication bucket list. And I came up with 10 things that I think all new journalism students should do during their first year. Number one, <laughs> shake hands with the dean. Don't be afraid. Um, our dean, he's a former CNN correspondent. Um, he's very approachable. Meet him, shake his hand, tell him about yourself. And you might even be able to check this one off your bucket list today. Number two, meet with a classmate, mate, or a professor on our Sumter Street patio or our rooftop garden. As you can tell, we are very proud of our new building. We've been in the dungeon of the Carolina Coliseum for many, many years. Um, and so now we have a rooftop venue, one of the only on campus. So once the weather is a bit cooler, and right now it's a kind of a torture chamber to be up there in the middle of the day, but once it's cooler, and also once our patio furniture arrives, we're still awaiting the arrival of that, take a moment to hang out there. Number three, begin to find your passion. So by now, all of you have chosen one of our six majors. <clears throat> but please know that it's okay that your interests may change over the next year or the next four years. Um, you're going to be learning many new things. You're going to be hearing new ideas. So start to explore your interests. Learn about all of our majors, which you definitely will do in our Journalism 101 course. And discover what your strengths are. So you may start out in, say, broadcast journalism, but you may decide that advertising is the right place for you. So be curious, learn about all of our majors, and then become an expert in the field where you're passionate. 
take advantage of our student services office. Student services is located on the first floor here. And we have lots of our student services team members here today. And can you kind of wave your hand? Many of them are standing. Some of them may be out in the hall or in the atrium. So and a little note about our student services, our student services. So in many large university settings in the journalism school, you come in your freshman year as a pre-journalism major. And so you really don't step foot in the journalism and mass comm student services center until your junior year. Well, here at USC, your freshman year, you are one of us. And so you have access to start student services from day one. So please take advantage of their services. They're here to help you. And there's research that shows that students who utilize these type of services um, have, high, have a higher success rate in college. Take control of your own destiny. You've probably heard a little about this at, by this point. Um, but yeah, if you want to make it to this point, graduating from the university, um, it's time for you to take care of yourself and not depend on someone else. So a lot of times the students I see in my offices are the ones who weren't aware of a certain deadline, maybe for a scholarship, for study abroad, they didn't know they needed a certain class to graduate, or maybe they were unaware about a prerequisite that they needed to take a, a higher level class. So all of what I just mentioned, most of the time could have been avoided if the student had taken control of their own destiny. So what can you do? Be curious, do your research, and don't depend on your, solely on your advisor, your professor, your fellow classmates to do the work for you. So for example, know what classes you think you want to take before you meet with your advisor. Know when you have deadlines for exams and double check them, triple check them. Um, and get used to being independent instead of depending on someone else to organize your life. Number six, attend some of our events. We have a lot of fun things and a lot of educational things going on in the school. So next Tuesday, we're having a welcome back social with Pelican Snowballs. Um, Parents Weekend, join us at 3 o'clock. During the Parents Weekend, we're going to have an ice cream social for you. We're very excited about the grand opening of our new building, which is going to be on September 16th, and we invite all students to attend that. We also have many guest speakers on campus. Um, right here, this is Justin Connolly, a senior vice president for ESPN. So take advantage of what we have to offer here in the School of Journalism and Mass Communications, and um, not just think so much about going to the football games and things like that. Think about what we have going on here, too. Number seven, get to know your professors. We have many faculty here today, and I was gonna ask them to stand, but it looks like they're all standing. Can you wave? Some out in the hall. Looks like we have faculty representing all of our majors here today, so thank you for coming. Our faculty are great teachers, they're great mentors, they're great researchers. So please introduce yourself to your professors. If you're in a large lecture, don't be afraid to go up and, and introduce yourself after class. Um, stop in and say hello during their office hours. We really do want to get to know you. So your professors can be a great resource inside and outside the classroom, so get to know them. Number eight, visit my CIC. Does anybody know what that is? Raise your hand, okay, good. All right, so at the university, we have two websites, really. We have an external website for people, you know, uh, um, prospective students, and that's what you see here. But if you look down at the bottom where it says, right here, my CIC, we also have an internal website. And so this is what that looks like. So it's a little different from the external site. So this is where you go to find uh, out everything about internships, how to figure out who your advisor is, information about study abroad, scholarships, how to change your major, all of that type of information. You need to find this internal site and go to it often. Number nine, watch a student produce newscast. So yes, as we've mentioned time and time again, we're very proud of our new building and happy to be here. 
Well, we also have a fully operational broadcast studio right here on the first floor, out the door to the left, around the corner. And um, there's windows right outside, so you can peek in and see what's going on in there. Our senior semester students put on a newscast every day at 4 o'clock. So sometime during the next semester, during the next year, pop in and see what they're doing in there. Check out the newscast. And finally, number 10, do more, even if it's just a little bit, five or 10 minutes a day. So I know the first semester at college can be very overwhelming. Even the first year in college can be overwhelming. But just take a few minutes, even five or 10 minutes a day, just to put in a little bit of extra effort. Take a look at that optional reading that your professor posted on Blackboard. Read over your notes that you took in class. Visit your professor during office hours. Do this little bit of extra effort and you will do better in your classes and you'll have many more opportunities open up for you. So we wanna add a few more action verbs to the mix about some things uh, you can do here to make your time here a success. We're calling it live, learn, and leverage, or get out there. Uh, we're a little bit different in terms of your university experience. We're gonna be a little bit different for you than the other parts. Uh, you know, the arts, the sciences, the humanities, the general education stuff, it's, it's about really developing a worldview in a sense and figuring out where you fit in that worldview. You might say it's about developing something to say. Well, we're a professional school, so we're about teaching you how to say it. So that's what a lot about what we're about. What do we mean by that? Let's give you some examples. Okay, so this is, as I said, I'm Brooke McKeever. Um, I teach in the public relations sequence here. Some of you might be enrolled in my public relations principles course, so if you are, um, please come up and introduce yourself. Um, this is another course that you can take when you're a little further along. This is a photo from our Atlanta Maymester course. Um, it's for public relations majors, but we also have advertising and journalism and mass communication majors in here. It's a three-week course during the month of May. We spend two weeks in the classroom in Columbia. Um, but then for one full week, we go to Atlanta, and we stay in the dorms at Georgia State University, and we visit lots of different public relations agencies. We visit the CDC, uh, the Georgia Aquarium, which is always a favorite stop, and we hear from different public relations and communications professionals. This is actually at Lockheed Martin. Um, we went and toured their facility, and uh, Stephanie is one of our SJMC alumni who takes us on the tour and talks to us about their different communications and CSR work. Um, up in the top there, we're with another uh, alumnus of our school. That's at AT&T in their corporate headquarters in Atlanta. And then this is at the Atlanta Convention and Visitors Bureau. So those are just some of the stops um, you would get to go on if you came on this trip and were in this class with us. Good examples of getting out there. Another good example is to get out and work with your professors on their research and their creative activity. Uh, this is a picture of Michael Tolbert who's working with Professor Denise McGill and another professor actually from uh, uh, geology uh, pi who pilots a quadcopter drone. Uh, they're working on a documentary of the uh, Gullah Sea Islands in St. Helena Island. And so it's a great example of Michael getting out there with the professor and doing some actual field work uh, beyond the classroom. Um, some examples, other examples of stuff that's gone on this summer. Yes, this is one of our public relations majors. It's Rob Dozier. Um, and he actually interned with the Atlanta Hawks Basketball Club um, this summer in their marketing department and he helped develop a public relations and marketing plan for them. This is Lena Laguerre who interned at Cosmo in New York. Uh, she did not do any of the research on the articles that you see on the front of her. Uh, but she did do page layout design and went on photo shoots. Uh, this is Alex. He interned at Sports Center, where he created broadcast schedules, operated cameras, and researched ratings for events and shows on ESPN. And this is Sharnita Mack, who worked at the Aiken Standard, where she did page layout, design, and shot photos. And this is Anthony Bruckner, one of our advertising majors, who uh, interned at an advertising agency called Q, where they created a marketing and branding campaign for the South Carolina State Fair. So just an example of people getting out there. Also, we want to get you to go way out there. Uh, one way to get way out there is to do a study abroad program that we offer, uh, and usually in May and in the summer. 
Uh, you'll meet this young lady here uh, in a few minutes. As you can tell, she looks very shy and tiring. Uh, but she hadn't been around much, so we had to teach her how to wear a backpack when we were going through security at the Neuschwanstein Castle in Germany. She was part of the study abroad program with Professor Farron uh, and myself in Munich. And the great thing about doing these study abroad things is these are media-themed study abroad things. They're not just tours and things like that. You'll come back with clips, stories, layout, design work that you can use to leverage your, your experience here. Things like this, for example, this magazine layout on the skater culture in Berlin. Or this brief little video, I'll play just a, a quick clip of it and we can and take a look. Uh, but this was a story they did this summer on body image in Germany. When I look in the mirror, Oh. You're asking so hard questions. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, it's not so easy to answer. I don't, I don't know, I've never thought about it. I just see myself. We'll just some quick, a quick clip of that. Another uh, big get out there experience is uh, a thing we've done in Malawi, Africa for two summers, uh, where we go do a service project with a nonprofit organization. Uh, students go there and film and shoot and write stories for this nonprofit and then uh, give them a material to put on their website and content, the, the promotional material, informational material to, to put on their website. Uh, when we came back from this experience, we also had a gallery exhibit of student photography project we call the Faces of Kwamba, Portraits of a Village. It was at the 701 uh, Gallery here in Columbia. So other examples of really getting out there and doing some different kind of things. Um, now, besides getting yourself out there and traveling, we also want you to get your work out there because, of course, we are a professional school. Um, so we want you to get your broadcasting out there, your photographs, your news stories, um, and your advertising and public relations plans. Um, we have lots of opportunities to help you do that. Um, we have competition teams, national teams, like our ad team. Um, here they are competing. Um, they go and compete with lots of other universities around the nation in national competitions. We also have something called the Bateman team on the public relations side. Um, and they usually work, they have a particular client or an issue that they work on every year. And it's usually something um, that we all care about, something like homelessness or bullying. And they create a campaign surrounding that issue. Um, there's also Carolina Agency and PRSSA. Oh, and this is Create-a-Thon. Um, it's a fairly new program that we've had just for the past couple of years, um, but it's been a really exciting event here on campus. We have lots of students and faculty involved in it. And basically, it's a 24-hour marathon um, where the students create lots of different creative work for local nonprofit organizations. And this is just one example of some of the creative work that students created for Harvest Hope Food Bank. Another way to get your work out there is to enter it in competition. So every time you do a class project, every time you do some creative work, save that stuff. Particularly if you're in, in my major, which is visual communication, save it. You're going to need it in your portfolio. We really encourage you to enter it in competitions. So here's some examples of uh, Daniel House, South Carolina News Photographer Award for his photo essay on the mud run out at Fort Jackson. Um, Rickson Lane, a broadcasting major, uh, entered and won a, a Society of Professional Journalists Mark, Mark of Excellence Award for his uh, story on sports reporting. Let me play a, a brief clip of that for you. Recruiting. I just gave you tonight's recruiting report. Phil Kornblut has covered recruiting for over 30 years. And there's one thing his listeners won't hear him mention when it comes to future college players. I don't trust the people who do the rankings because I think a lot of the rankings are manipulative, ma manipulated by the college coaches who want something done. I think it's heavily political. The Gamecocks have had two five-star prospects drafted since 2006. In that same time period, six two-stars have gone from williams Bryce Stadium to the NFL draft. Another example of this, Laura Smith, uh, whose story is placed in the feature category of the first round of the Hearst competition. Uh, her stories were also no nominated twice for Student News Emmy in the Southeast uh, competition. She's now a, a morning anchor and reporter in Bangor, Maine. Coming up at six, what the, DNR offices are doing to prepare for the 4th of July weekend. When you see flashing lights on the school bus and the stop sign extended, drivers should not go past the school bus or this camera and four other cameras will catch you and there will be a costly penalty. 
to your driver's license, and to your bank account. Some other examples. Yes, so this is um, Isabel Krishudian. I have a hard time with that last name. Um, but she won an SPJ Mark of Excellence Award, and actually I found out that she is now working at the Washington Post. So our majors do lead to jobs after graduation, too. <laughs> Um, and this is uh, Sarah Ellis, and she also won an SPJ Mark of Excellence Award. Uh, finally, you don't have to just enter awards. You can take your work out there and shop it around. Don't limit it to what's going on in the classroom. Take it out there, shop it around to media outlets, newspapers, uh, websites, online places. Get those clips published. That's a huge thing for your portfolio. Kind of like Tim uh, Kalal, Kalal did. Uh, he took a project that he did in one of his intro to journalism courses, shopped it around, and had it posted on Gamecocks Online, which is the online uh, site for USC sports. I'll play a brief clip of this uh, on the baseball, on one particular baseball player. Now it's Justino it goes the opposite way. Hopes a line drive to the right field. And it is a home run. Second home run. Third home run. Third home run. Goes yard for the fourth time. You don't want to challenge the big kid. Alex Justino from North Buncombe High School is a true freshman here at the University of South Carolina. Besides being a hardworking student, Alex is also a key part of the South Carolina baseball team. I just, I, I just love the spot I'm at. I mean, I enjoy coming here every day to this facility. I also enjoy going to the classrooms. I'll stop with that. Uh, just to conclude, you know, we've given you a lot of do this, do that, get here, go there. Uh, I do want to leave you with this image. Uh, I love this one of my favorite images. Uh, Professor Farron and I took a group to Malawi, Africa, and uh, one of the events we did, we went out in the village, spent a few days in this village, and this is where the students slept, we all slept, and uh, they were in dancing with a bunch of these villagers from this small village where we were working, and Farron and I were standing out in, the, uh, out in this field, we were kind of watching all this, and this is a time-elapse photograph shot to capture what the stars really look like that night. If you've never seen a, a night sky in southern Africa, you ought to make that one of your bucket list things to do. We looked at each other, we said, man, I can't believe we get paid to do this. <laughs> so uh, you ought to feel like that too about your experience. I hope you do, because the fun will come when you get out there and you get beyond the classroom. It's going to be a great four years. So um, I made nine things I wish someone told me when I was a freshman. So. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> so number one, the most important thing for me was finding my people. Um, I found my people at the Daily Gamecock in student media, and I'm just going to go ahead and plug it now. I hope that's okay. Tomorrow is the student media showcase. If you want to join the Daily Gamecock, which is the newspaper, uh, the Garden Black, the magazine, the WSC is the radio station, and SGTV is the TV station. Um, it's not necessarily part of the School of Journalism, but it's very important to you know get that kind of experience. Some of the higher level journalism classes, that's when you'll get to use the, uh, you know, the studio in here and do the Carolina Reporter and the ad team and that kind of thing. But if you want to uh, kind of get in on the ground floor and start as a freshman, head on over to Student Media, um, which is in Russell House. So finding your people is one of the most important things that you can do really in all of college. And it doesn't need to be journalism. It doesn't need to be anything related to your major. Just show of hands, how many people know no one coming here? Okay, Bring up high, cause, so you can make friends with them. Uh, great, again, you're welcome. <laughs> um, even if you know one or two people, it's still a huge school. We have more than 30,000 undergrads here. So finding someone, so finding a group of people that you're comfortable with, uh, it goes such a long way. So I started a tradition and carried it on, and I don't think anyone has continued it, but of taking selfies during production for the Gamecock. And actually, it got a little annoying, and people stopped jumping in on them, but whatever. Um, so number two uh, is I just kind of this last semester um, figured out that taking pictures is super important. Um, even if it's the most mundane thing, if it's like what you ate for breakfast, later on you're going to be like, those grits were so good, and you're going to want to remember them. Um, so these are a few pictures that I actually took in Germany. I, that was my breakfast. I ate that ice cream on a waffle, and actually, you can see that's the uh, chocolate syrup, and there's some crushed nuts on top. Do you want to take a second to look at it? <laughs> so that was my breakfast, um, and it was just a random shot. Like I had my friend hold it, and I took a picture of it, and it is now one of my favorite pictures I've ever taken. Um, this was actually in the Dachau concentration camp. Um, 
again, it was a picture that I didn't think twice. It was actually in the gas chamber, and I kind of uh, just snapped a picture of the window, and it turned out that it made this really cool shadow. And I, was, I got back to the States and was showing my grandma all these pictures. She's not Jewish or anything, but I was showing her pictures. Um, and she was saying, you know, that picture's actually really moving, and you didn't think twice about it, but look what you've made. And that was cool. Um, and this is a guy, this is like 100% Berlin, um, maybe the most Berlin thing in the world, uh, a guy playing guitar on the street. And this was just a guy sitting there. I don't know him. He does not know me. So I hope he's cool with this. Um, <laughs> But it was one of those things that I took a picture and later I was like, I want other people to see it. So that brings me to the next thing, which is make things that you'll remember. Um, every branch of journalism, what, all right, I'm sorry, I kind of feel like a stand-up comedian up here. And I'm like, well, it's funny over there, line food. Um, <laughs> I just had to say that real quick. Um, every part of journalism, whether it's actual, like print journalism, broadcast journalism, um, PR, uh, advertising, what am I missing? BizCom. You're making something, uh, whether you're making an article, whether you're designing a page, whether you're shooting pictures, whether you're making an, a plan for uh, a public relations firm or an advertising firm, you're making something. Um, so these are a few things that we made at the Gamecock. Um, that's where most of my clips are from, so sorry for the kind of redundancy. But I mean, these are just things that we ended up being really proud of. Like, this was a story about how sophomore year people start to kind of crash and they're like, oh, I, oh God, you're gonna be fine. Freshman, you're fine. <laughs> um, but in the middle of college, some people kind of freak out, want to change their major, and it turned into a really nice design. And it's just looking back, you kind of remember how proud you are of it. So um, I'm getting sentimental up here. Um, but these are just a few fronts that I kind of plucked out. But again, if like uh, they were saying earlier, if you want to win awards, make sure that you're doing things that you're proud of. Because the thing that you pulled out of your behind last minute, that's not the award-winning piece that you're gonna to submit to everybody. That's something that came out of your behind. Um, <laughs> so this is us, we, uh, the Daily Gamecock is actually named the second best uh, college newspaper in the country last year. So this is us accepting that award. Um, number four is ask questions. Uh, you're gonna learn so much more here if you just ask people. If you go four years not talking to anyone and just kind of going through your classes, it doesn't matter if you graduate with a 4.0 and you know, a couple of friends. If you didn't take the time to get out there and ask people things and find out things for yourself, I mean, you learned things, but you could have learned so much more, right? Um, and parents, that's why we're paying tuition, because we want them to learn things. So you don't just want to learn what you're learning in the classroom. You want to learn things that are on top of your syllabus. Um, you want to go out and you want to actually get to know what you're learning about, which brings me to maybe my most important one, which is know what's up. Um, this is you don't want to be that guy, especially in a journalism school where the teacher looks at you and he's like, hey, uh, what was on the front of the state this morning? And you're like, what's the state? That's a newspaper, by the way. Um, so you need to know what's going on. And again, this isn't just for journalism. If you're a PR major, you want to know what people are looking for in a PR representative these days. If you're doing advertising, you want to know what kind of advertising companies are looking for. You want to know how to best meet your clients' needs. Um, so just pay attention. Um, this one's also really important. These are all really important, so that's why I keep saying that. Um, you should connect with everyone, and I actually thought of this one when I thought of kind of my relationships with different professors in the J School. Um, you never know when you're gonna need to, you know, kind of lean on someone. Everyone that you meet someday is gonna come back. I mean, it, it could be in the most random way, but the teacher that you have your freshman year, you might need to ask them for a letter of recommendation when you're like 26, I don't know. Um, but it's important to make sure that you're establishing these connections and keeping up with them. If you have a professor in your freshman year and you're in a, a lecture of 300 people, go to their office hours, introduce yourself, make sure you have some kind of relationship that isn't just, I sat in the back. Good. Because um, <laughs> that's not going to get you anywhere. Okay, this is also important. Look outside, which when I said this, I was not anticipating that out here would be a construction zone, so that is not what I mean. But, um, Make sure that you aren't just focusing on the curriculum here, like I said before. Make sure that you're taking the time to actually get out and experience college, because we have windows in this building now, and I know that they called it a dungeon. What Dr. Tanner said, it was literally underground. There were no windows at all. There was not one, when, I can't stress this enough, how few windows there were. There were zero windows. Um, and now, I think they did this on purpose. There's at least 10 windows in every room. Um, so, cherish them. It was not always this way. 
Um, and this is crucial. It, the, all of these things are things that you have to do. Um, you know, you can't rely on your parents to pick up after you or do your work anymore. Not saying they did. Mine definitely didn't, but you know, I don't know. Um, you need to make sure that you're the one planning out your schedule. Go to your advisor and get their advice, but you need to be the one to decide what classes you're going to take and what you want to focus on. Um, go to your professors with questions. Don't rely on them to give you an A. You earn an A, so make sure that you know that distinction. Don't have your roommates do your work for you. Just make sure that you're doing what you need to do to be here, because uh, this is all you. So it's very weird to me that now I am going to be a senior, because now it's your turn. Um, which is so exciting. And I hope that you guys uh, learn everything you can from this place. I don't know, I don't really have a solid closing now, so I'm just gonna skip ahead to this. Um, <laughs> this is how you should be feeling right now because there is no other time that you're gonna feel like you do right now sitting here. This is so exciting. You guys have four years of studying the coolest stuff in the world, and you can do it in so many different ways. There are so many people here who want to help you. There are so many things, I don't know, I'm rambling. Um, <laughs> but anyway, be excited and harness that energy and use it to start off a great college experience because you guys picked a good school with a cool building. So I'm going to be done. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah.